trust has become a form of currency because it's the only thing people can't and don't have. You can't buy trust. And if you think about that for a second, you can buy anything else on this planet, most likely on eBay, but you can't buy trust. Trust is something that's created between two human beings. So in terms of currency, we've done everything we possibly could in the past 12 years to rid ourselves of trust between people. And so corporations that have it or um, people that have trust are a very valued institution. I was working with a large firm who will remain anonymous that wanted to do an environmental project. They, um, they wanted to have, I'll make it up, clean water. And they wanted to say they were the cleanest water corporation on the West Coast. And so we said, sure. And we went away and we started thinking about this. And so we started doing research. And I, at the time, had a brilliant assistant. And he really quickly started looking at these things. And then he went down one more layer and went down one more layer and went down one more layer. And he found out through the internet that that same company that was talking about beautiful, clean water and everything on the West Coast and wearing Birkenstocks and cool clothes and playing ping pong on a table was very, very busy on the East Coast taking all the crap from its foundry or factory, I can't remember the exact word they called it, and putting it into the ocean down there and polluting. So within three hours on the internet, he had found out all of this stuff that they had hoped would never come out. That's a whole different ball of wax in terms of building trust for a corporation. And for people that are running for politics, for actors, for actresses, that, that whole world is beginning to shift. We've gone as bad as we can possibly go. Leaders have lied. They've cheated. They've stolen. They've said, I've lied, cheated, and stolen. And no one's put them in jail. Right. Oh, OK, so where are we going to go? What are you going to do to make yourself new and interesting in this economy? You actually have to do something good. I came to the conclusion through my research on leadership that we were moving into a new leadership paradigm. But how were we going to begin to do that and why became more of the question. So in a nutshell, we were changing from our traditional old way of leading to this whole new way of communicating with people versus telling people what to do. In terms of being a leader, in terms of being a corporation, when you feel good about exactly what it is you're doing and you're communicating and you can understand your role and you trust the leaders in your organization, you're a hell of a lot more productive. We don't have that trust currently and that's where mentoring came in because mentoring enables people to rebuild the bonds of trust. We spend a lot of time investing in technology and maybe we'll train people how to use technology, but technology is nothing without somebody using it, without that person using it. No matter how big you are as a corporation, if even your weakest link could be the most junior receptionist at your front desk, because somebody could catch her on a bad day and say, hey, what do you think of this company? And just a nice, ordinary, everyday person coming up to a receptionist and have their little iPhone there, and this receptionist can go, actually, I hate them. We just let 32 people go. They didn't give them anything, blah, blah, blah. And all of us have done this. We've all sat in a receptionist's office with a very young receptionist who's maybe kind of bored or doesn't know what her job is, and just talk to her. Technology gives us the ability to record it, post it, get it out there, and tell the truth about the company.